James O'Shea! You guys are savage. I'm keeping my coat on, I know how this rolls, so. <laughs> uh, but uh, I know it's late, it's mid-January, but I just want to say, I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. And to all the guys here, I hope you enjoyed that Lynx Africa gift set your Aunt Judy got you for the 19th time. <laughs> Some of us are nearly 30. We've got mortgages and jobs, and they still give us Lynx Africa body set. Like, like Aunt Judy, I'm, I've got kids now. You know, I need to man up. Give me something better. Like, you know, give me that Nivea finesse shit. I'm, I'm ready to roll up, you know. <laughs> I also hope you enjoyed watching um, Home Alone 1 and 2 for the 209th time of your life. Yes. And then you realize Harry and Marv are the two toughest motherfuckers in this goddamn world. <laughs> Could you imagine being their doctors? Like, so you were electrocuted. <laughs> Uh, to the point you were a skeleton, close to long. All right. You were hit in the, brick, hit in the face of a brick nine times. Same spot, you didn't move, okay. And uh, your hair caught on fire and you did a gymnast flip into the toilet. Um, are you high? <laughs> no, you should be, because you know, that makes sense. Could you imagine being Kevin, going back to school the day after? It's like, hey Kevin, how's your holidays? <laughs> I, I don't want to talk about it, you know, just stuff happening. Was it worse than last year? the same shit. <laughs> they didn't just leave the state, they left the goddamn country. <laughs> Holy shit. Could you imagine, if I was Kevin, I would be so emotionally abusive. I'm like, hey mom, I'm just going to the kitchen. Don't worry, I'll be back. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fucked up. It's a great film though. But uh, I want to thank you guys for, uh, also for coming up to uh, Up The Creek. It's a great place, good looking crowd, even though I ain't got my glasses on. But it's a great, uh, I'm glad to see you guys. It's great to be in Greenwich, or as I like to call it, Safe Lewisham. If so. <laughs> some of you, some of you know about Lewisham. Some of you are like, oh, it's Lewisham. What's what's up with Lewisham? I'll do a quick fact. Uh, some of you who weren't in this country, about a couple, a decade ago, we had the London riots. Uh, there was stuff on the floor, glass damage. If you go to Lewisham right now, that shit looks like it's still happening. It's basically <laughs> half time, you know, and no one's blowing the whistle. That's crazy. I saw a fire engine on fire. That's that's a whole thing, you know. <laughs> You know, Lewisham's getting better, it's, it's improved. We've got a cost of coffee now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Lewisham's also a place, it's a great mix of people, but it's a place where you can see the whitest girl say the blackest thing. If you don't know what I mean, it'd be like, I went to a coffee shop and this girl, I don't know her name, but she was a redhead, you know, they're nice. You know, and she just said, Wa Guanji, where's my rascal cappuccino? Man's not busting and waiting for no tune. And everyone behind was like, did that ginger girl just say bus and what the hell's going on? Like, okay, uh, Penelope, why don't you ease up and I'll get you a cappuccino, all right? So, you know. I feel like I did a perfect impression of someone you guys all know. Like, oh, we know a Penelope, yeah, we went to uni with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's from the mean streets of uh, Bath, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah she, says it's, she says it's rough there. I mean, she says it's basically, she said Top Boy is based on her life, so, you know. We all, we all know a Penelope, right? We, we all know one. The Penelope I know, she likes to call herself an activist, but I like to call her unemployed and annoying. That's basically <laughs> it. Like she, gets mad, she got uh, mad at Kanye, and I, I, I kind of zone out the news. Last time I checked, Kanye said he liked Hitler, so now I think he's trying to invade Poland, you know, game recognized game, shit like that. And, and you know, she was like, we gotta, we gotta boycott Kanye. We can't buy Yeezys and Balenciaga and any of that shit. And I'm like, girl, I work at Morrison's part-time. <laughs> I have a zero, also my side hustle is a zero hour contract handing out free newspapers outside tube stations. Financially, I've been boycotting Kanye since 2015. <laughs> if that makes, you know, if that makes me an activist, then I've been boycotting Lamborghini, I've been boycotting Gucci, and you know what? I might boycott this month's rent. <laughs> and maybe next month's rent. <laughs> Got the blood of Martin Luther King in me. But you know, compared to her, I'm not really the coolest black dude. Like, she can quote Malcolm X, she can quote rap and all that. Me, this is a bad thing for a black dude to admit. I can probably quote Mean Girls more than I have a dream speech. <laughs> Some of you now want to see that, right? Am I right? Yeah. I have a dream that one day black people and white people will stop trying to make fetch a thing. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh shit, yeah, she knows the words. I damn right do. Don't even get me started on Legally Blonde, one and two, exactly. I am an enigma. Enigma, that's what I said, not the other. Just someone was like, can he say that? I didn't know, like, I don't know, 2023, I guess we can say whatever we want. 
I wish I had politics jokes for you guys. I don't. Like, again, I, I don't tune into the news. Like, the last time I saw it was, it was Matt Hancock going to the jungle, which was, you know, I mean, we were all praying for a crocodile attack, but it never happened. But I looked at that dude, I'm like, this guy's responsible for the one of the worst things in the world. He, his response was terrible. But you know what? I was mad at him. That dude had two girls at one time, but I can't get one match on Hinge. <laughs>